What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the market data from September 2023. We're going to be diving into what the real estate market's been doing in Tulare County to take a look at what we can expect this fall, heading into winter, and maybe even into 2024. Now, interest rates continue to rise month over month, and while we expect one more interest rate rise this year, hopefully in 2023 that starts to taper off. So let's take a look at what that has done to buyer activity, what it's done to the inventory in the real estate market, and what we can expect going forward. Average sale price rebounded slightly, uh, up to $397,146. Uh, we are up 7.8% year over year, so that's actually really good. For a while here, we were even or even slightly negative year over year. So uh, we're looking pretty good right now. And again, if you look over the last three years, um, the, the growth in housing has just been fantastic. Anybody who's, who's a homeowner has got fantastic equity in their home if you've owned for at least two, three years. Uh, and so we kind of are in an equity rich environment right now, which is nice. If you look at the last three years, uh, again, 397, 146 last month in September, a year ago, 368,000, two years ago, 332, and three years ago, all the way down to $278,000. So you can see just a huge increase over the last few years. So yeah, when you look at housing and it feels expensive, it absolutely is more expensive than what you're used to seeing. Uh, but again, if you are on the side of being a property owner, you're very glad to have been on that side and to be seeing those gains. Now, price per square foot has continued to fall down to $219 per square foot. We were around $230 per square foot in June. So this was the previous all time high and we've slowly been dwindling down since then. And again, this is kind of to be expected. Summer and spring are the hottest time in real estate. And as you head into fall and winter, things tend to cool off a little bit. Now taking a look at new listings, this has been one of the most concerning things as we've left 2022 and gone through 2023 so far. Now we actually saw pretty consistent inventory all the way up until about mid 2022. But if you look here in June 2022 when we peaked and we spiked up here, it was just a free fall after that, all the way down heading into 2023. We've slowly been rebounding, but it just hasn't been enough. And that is what's kept buyer activity, that's what's kept the market so strong, even though buyer activity hasn't really been there like it was during these years, uh, the, the low inventory has kept things really, really competitive. So again, throughout 2023, we've seen it slowly start to rebound, but we dropped off again in September with 271 new homes hitting the market. Now, compared to the last three years, we had 308 last September, 393 the September before that, and 395 the September before that. So again, we're still 25, 30% lower than we would typically expect to be, even though we already saw that trend start back in 2022. Now, homes for sale. We're currently sitting at 480 homes on the market in Tulare County, which is super low. Now, obviously we have half the inventory that we had pre-pandemic. Buyer activity is much, much lower than it was during the pandemic, fortunately. But I expect that buyer activity to remain consistent and we need the inventory to start to rise. We need more new listings if we expect this, this aggressiveness to ease. Like right now, it's still an extreme seller's market. And if we want buyers to have a chance or, or be able to negotiate you know, more repairs or be able to negotiate closing costs and things like that, we've got to get more inventory on the market. Now take a look at pending sales. We've been rebounding since late 2022, about December of 2022 and throughout 2023, but it's been a slow rebound. So as activity fell throughout 2022 and we've seen it start to rebound, we're only about halfway back to where we were during the pandemic. Now again, this was a weird time, right? We didn't typically see this type of activity prior to the pandemic, but when we're always looking at these, you know, go going three years back, um, it just looks a little bit skewed thanks to that pandemic data because there was so much activity going on during the market at that time. Now, what's interesting is again, pending sales rebounded this month. And uh, if you look at the last three years, um, 243 last month, 220 the year before, 322 two years ago, and 349 three years ago. So buyer activity much hotter during the pandemic than we've seen coming out of it. Take a look at closed sales. It seems to lately be the inverse of what we see with pending. If pending rebounds, closed sales drops off. If closed sales drops off, pending sales is rebounding. So we're kind of seeing the market teeter-totter there. Again, it's to be expected, right? If it's pending this month, it's probably gonna close next month. So, uh, you know, the, the lag there between closed sales and pending sales is to be expected. So we had another drop-off heading into September. We're down to 229 closed sales last month. 
and again still holding pretty you know pretty much what we've seen all year so nothing too surprising there again i think we'll see pending and closed activity pick up once we see more listings on the market if we look at the last three years we had 229 last month in september 295 last year in september 332 two years ago and 352 closed sales three years ago now taking a look at days on market, we always use the median instead of the average for days on market because there's homes that just sit on there forever. People list them way too high and they just have it sit on the market. So that obviously skews the data. So we always try to use the median. Uh, and uh, right now we're looking at 11 days on market on average for September. That's dropped off quite a bit from what we've seen coming out of the summer. But again, um, you know, it's to be expected when there's not a whole lot out there to choose from. Overall months of inventory to me this has been the number one indicator that I've been keeping an eye on and the to me it's what's really affected home prices the most as you can see heading into the pandemic the the overall supply of homes just dropped off because buyers flooded into the market and sellers did not want to sell their homes home builders had to shut down for a while because of inventory issues and, and uh, you know they weren't able to get supplies and things like that there was shutdowns as far as the transportation of supplies and you know, just, just overall supply suffered throughout the pandemic, as you can see. We have not been able to rebound really since then. You can see it kind of spiked up here a little bit back up to 2.5, 2.75 months of inventory. But again, your typical buyer's market is five months of inventory or more. Five, seven, nine, 12 months of inventory. That's your typical buyer's market. So right now, we're still in an extreme seller's market simply driven by this low inventory. Again, 2.1 months of inventory, that's down 16% year over year. Now in summary, average sale price rebounded in September, although it's still well below the all-time highs that we saw in June. Year over year though, average sale price has increased by 7.8%, which is very solid for an investment. Price per square foot pulled back to $219 per square foot in September, which is well below the previously recorded all-time high of $230 per square foot that we saw in June. New listings remain significantly lower this year than in previous years with only 271 new properties hitting the market in September. Pending sales rebounded in September while closed sales fell off. Buyer activity was lower than previous years but extremely low inventory has kept things competitive. Homes for sale are extremely low, sitting all the way down at 2.1 months of inventory and again to me this is the biggest concern in the real estate market right now. Now I want to thank you guys for watching. We do these every month. We try to cover all of the newest data and try to take a look at what we can expect going forward from what we know. Now if you guys have any feedback, please let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can email me, send me a message on Messenger, shoot me a text, call me, Messenger Pigeon. I don't care how you do it. Find a way to contact me and I would be happy to help. Again, my name is David Hahn. Thank you for watching. Having a little trouble, ask David, huh? When they never get it done, ask David, huh? They gon' wanna give a hand, ask David, huh? Be someone to save the day, ask David, huh? David, huh? David, huh? When they all fallin' short, pass me the baton. Can't handle your inquiries, a marathon. And can't nobody do a better man than David, huh?